So I'm back with the Whitneyville. Uh, it's being cleaned up a fair bit now. Uh, looking pretty good. Not uh, perfect, but uh, pretty good. And uh, as a lot of you have pointed out, I think these antiques look better when they're not perfect. Uh, there's something to be said for still looking like an antique. If it was made yesterday, uh, it should look like it was made yesterday. If it was made 140 years ago, maybe it should look like it is. Um, anyway, we're going to put this back together. And essentially, back together is just the reverse of how it came apart. Um, not a big deal. I, like say, I left uh, the cylinder uh, lock installed and the uh, release for the cylinder pin. Uh, there was no real need to take them out. Uh, I could have. Uh, they were blued before, and now they have a bit of nickel on them. Uh, it looks fine, though. And it saved a lot of hassle. They didn't need to come out. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, like I say, basically the reverse of uh, having come apart. Throw the hammer in there. You can see how it uh, just drops right in at the indexing pole. Pop that on. Every now and again, uh, I've put these back together and had that upside down and had to tear them apart again. And uh, Not fun, but not the end of the world either. Trigger slips in there. Try and find the hole. So at this point, I'm going to have to step away for a moment and uh, go out to the garage. Um, I just need to tap this pin in. Sometimes they're loose enough. You can work them in with just your hands and uh, a pair of pliers. Uh, other times, uh, you need to tap them in and out. Uh, this one's a tap. Uh, I remember it was kind of a little difficult to pull out. So uh, it's going to be a little difficult to put in. That's not a bad problem. Um, I mean, from an assembly perspective, it's a pain. But uh, from a function perspective, it just means it's never going to work itself out. Uh, anyway, I'll go take care of that and be back in a moment. Hey, so through the magic of uh, editing, I am back and we now have a pin in place. And we can check the function of all this. There's half cock. It's holding. Full cock. It's holding. Squeeze the trigger. Off it goes. Half. Or sorry, that was full. And uh, off. So we know the trigger is seated properly. Um, one thing that I guess I could have showed you guys is uh, the little spring behind the trigger. On this one, uh, it's a coil spring. If that ever breaks, um, it's really handy to use... Uh, a a uh, pen, spring from a pen. Uh, they work pretty good. They can be modified. Sometimes you have to wind them tighter to uh, make them fit because they're a little big for this application. Sometimes they're the perfect size. Um, other times it's a V-spring. And uh, if any of you have watched my spring videos, um, sometimes you can make that with a hairpin. Uh, sometimes you need something a little thicker. But uh, yeah, anyway, this one was a coil spring. I uh, kind of wish I had shown it again, although uh, you may see it when it's if you look back in the video and uh, saw it sitting on the ground. Anyway, um, so that's all good. We'll put the main spring in. This can be a little bit uh, finicky sometimes. It takes a bit of force. But it just sits in that little notch on the back of the... Uh, hammer sometimes I can get these with my hand just my hand other times oh there we go it takes a pair of pliers got this one with my hand so you just want to have that sitting in uh, nicely in that little groove down there and the groove up here. Give that a try. Oh, oh I think I put it in backwards. My bad. <laughs> uh, it happens. Okay. 
same process oops just reversed and again it can take a little bit there's a surprising amount of force on a good spring but there we go so now it should work yeah Oop, not even in frame hard to work and stay in frame anyway um, so if you watch spring sitting there it's down in that little groove it's in the right direction now it's always a good thing cocked so it's working good I always like to check things as much as possible before I put them completely back together if anything's wrong um, like the spring being in backwards it kind of sucks if you've already got the other screws in and uh, then have to go and remove them again uh, again not the end of the world but just kind of sucky now like I said in the last video that's the spring that keeps tension on the indexing pole so I'm going to uh, just pop that down I'm going to try and slide it in a little bit I want to feel if I can the spring yeah there we go it should be uh, sliding down and pushing on that pole and I can see the uh, pole coming out. I lie, Paul's not quite coming out. So let's try that again. I'm just going to make sure that that's down. I'm going to try again. There we go. Now let's take another look. There, there, now we go. Sorry, I could see it moving in there, but it wasn't sticking out. Now you can see, that might help, sticking out. That's to index the cylinder. So now I know that spring is sitting in there right. Pop that screw in. Now if you're working on these, it's really important to have an assortment of screwdrivers uh, so you can find the perfect fit, because you do not want to mar these bolts or these screws. Um, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of them are worn already from, you know, 140 years of disassembly for cleaning and maintenance and whatnot. You don't want to make that any worse. So, uh, the, oh, and the other thing is they're rather hard to replace. You can't just go and buy a, a slotted screw that happens to be the right size and thread and everything to match this 140 year old screw. So uh, I have a whole set, not a high-end set, uh, but, you know, they're quality bits. And, uh, you know, given the assortment, it allows me to uh, find the right one to not do any harm. So I'll put the scales back on. Got that backwards. One side's threaded and the other side's got a clearance hole, but they're aesthetically almost the same size. And you'll notice uh, I use these bits without even putting a screwdriver on a lot of the time because you're not cranking this stuff down. You're just snugging it up. And I'm more than capable of doing that with just my fingers. I don't need a screwdriver to do that. Um, in fact, uh, it's safer for, to just do it with your fingers. Because um, again, it doesn't need to be cranked down. And uh, lastly, we'll throw the cylinder in. Now, I rust blued this, which uh, I got to thank the uh, French gunsmith out for. Uh, I'd heard of it before. I'd never really looked into it, didn't really know what was involved, and he suggested boiling it. And uh, I did that. Um, it was great. Uh, boiled it for, oh, I forget, an hour or so. Um, maybe it wasn't even that long. It was a half hour. And uh, cleaned it up with um, some steel wool. Ideally, I would have liked to have used a uh, card from Brownells, but I'm, you know, I'm up in Canada. 
I didn't have one and um, steel wool seemed to do the trick just to take the worst of it off and it went from the uh, red oxide to the black uh, oxide um, so it has that blued look again uh, there's still traces of nickel on it and a little bit of pitting uh, that's fine it actually cleaned up rather nice um, I'd heard of like say rust bluing but I didn't know what was involved until uh, he said to ch you know try boiling it he boils all his guns and uh, I'm sold <laughs> I'm going to be playing with this process uh, more in the future uh, anyway if you guys get a chance you should check him out he's uh, got a nice little channel out of France uh, it's the French gunsmith and uh, yeah seems like a great guy Anyway, we'll throw the uh, cylinder in now. That's just sliding it in, bring the hammer back a little bit. That's got a flat spot on it, so it just slides in there. Make it all line up, Boop. off it goes. There we go. Lockup's tight, indexing's good. All cylinders. This is a fine little pistol now. I mean, it was a fine pistol before, but it was really showing its age. But uh, I gotta say, you know, now that's a thing of beauty. I uh, I'm really really happy for a pistol that came in looking the way it did, and uh, you know, being 140 years old or more. Um, I'm happy with this. This will be a real nice little pistol for somebody's collection. Uh, it's 30 rim fire, so not my thing. Um, I like the 32s just because I like to shoot them. Uh, one of these days, I will make some brass uh, for 30 rim fire. You can do it out of 22 Hornet or 17 Hornet, cut down and modified. Uh, but uh, I haven't done that yet. So one of these days. Um, anyway, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'd like to keep doing this, bring you more. Um, yeah, if you, if you like this, please like and subscribe. It helps me out, and uh, I'd like to see this channel grow. I think uh, the antique world is great, and I like sharing it. Thanks for watching.